Sisters and brothers, a very hearty welcome to each one of you to the 20th Sunday of the liturgical year in the ordinary time. Each time when we read the word of God, we are brought to a new awareness how we need to progress in our faith life in the person of Jesus. The first reading from the book of prophet Isaiah, the second reading from the letter to the Romans, and the gospel according to St. Matthew, bring home to us this attitude of growing in faith as the call of the Christian today. We are well presented with a reading from the prophet Isaiah today to make us aware how much we have to grow beyond our ghetto mindset and accept the plan of God in and through our faith. The people of Israel are in exile. They were under the Babylonian exile, suffering persecutions in their lives. The prophet Isaiah now prophesies the wonderful message that they are going to get back home. And they did so. But the exile was not the final conclusion to their problems. Even after they returned from the exile into Israel, they had some more problems to solve. And what was that problem? The problem was, when they were in exile, some of the foreigners became very close to them and some of them got converted into the Jewish faith. They too traveled back with them into Israel. Naturally, the question now remains, should we accept them or not? It is here that a division arose among them. They were not sure how to handle this new people into the fold of the Jewish faith. Now there comes the command of God. It is not merely your external practices that make you my children. You need to live in justice and righteousness. Remember my brothers and sisters, these two words are constantly repeated in the Bible. Justice and righteousness. The greatest weapon of God to discern whether you are in the fold of God or not is to make yourself aware whether you are just or righteous. God tells, when you find these Gentiles just and righteous, practicing goodness in their life, accept them into my fold. Even when they offer the sacrifices in the temple, they are no more abominable for me because they are doing it in righteous consciousness. I will accept their sacrifices. I will accept their gifts. I will accept their offerings. Yes, we are presented with a new message here today. We who are always affected by ghetto mindset, when we are affected by the divisions of caste, creed, religion and right, we should be aware of one thing. The false traditions that we hold for ourselves are not in fact the mind of God. God looks at justice and righteousness as the true instruments to prove his credibility. When people live in justice and righteousness, they can never go away from the true path. It is not about caste. It is not about right not even about religion, but it's all about my interior credibility to uphold the values of God through righteousness and justice. That's where faith engenders. Sisters and brothers, always remember, faith is not merely my creation. Faith is in fact instilled in me through the grace of God. My responsibility is to nourish this faith by contributing my best through righteousness and justice and thus uphold my faith in my day-to-day -day life. I remember an incident narrated 
about a group of sociology students. Perhaps I might have already mentioned it to you once, but still I believe that this is very important for us in the concrete context of our readings today to understand what in fact a religion is. These students were in the classroom, in a French classroom. And the professor who is a French asked the students a question that was very, very perturbing. He calls out the name of one of the students and asks her, Catherine, you are a Catholic French girl. Tell me now, suppose if you were to be born in India, what would have been your religion? And Catherine answers, Hinduism, most probably. And your God, Rama or Krishna? Okay, Catherine, if you were to be born in Sri Lanka, what most probably would have been your religion? And Catherine says, most probably my religion would have been Buddhism. And your guru? Buddha, naturally. Okay, Catherine, if you were to be born in Iraq, what would have been your religion? And Catherine immediately answers, Islam. And your God? Allah. Now the professor gathers all his students together and he tells them, my dear children, remember one thing. Even the religion in which you profess your faith in is as accidental as the color of your skin. You may boast about your religion. I'm a Christian. I'm a Hindu. I'm a Muslim. But then it's merely an accident. Suppose if you were to be born in another country, would you ever have got this religion? Would you ever have professed the name of the God in whom you are professing your faith in today? I still remember my journey in the poorest country called Chad. When I saw the poverty of the people around, I said only one thing. My God, thank you that I am not born here. What a subjective statement. I should be able to thank God for the wonderful gift of life that God has given me, but never at the cost of someone's tragedy. Everybody is equal to God in his life. Yes, my brothers and sisters, it is in this context I come to the gospel of the day, where a Canaanite woman is encountering Jesus. We are reading from the gospel according to St. Matthew. And as all of us are well aware, Matthew the evangelist was a pro-Jewish person who supported always the Jews who became Christians. Naturally, there are also certain struggles coming into that. Now the question is, how can a person become Christian who is not of the Jewish fold? Very often, there had been a confusing situation for the Jewish Christians at that time. For example, if you read the Gospel of Matthew chapter 10, verses 5 and 6, there is a statement of Jesus which had been a cause of confusion for many of the Jews. The statement is this, Jesus telling his disciples who were sent into the apostolic ministry that go to the lost sheep of Israel and never entered the towns of the Gentiles. And that was provoking the Jewish Christians at that time not to take anyone as members of Christianity outside the Jewish fold. It's here that Matthew wanted to make also a statement very clear as coming from the mouth of Jesus. You know very well, in the same gospel according to Matthew, in chapter 28, we hear also Jesus saying, Go to the whole world and make everyone my disciple. Yes, the Lord has a plan for everyone. Universal salvation is the story of Jesus Christ. As a result, we see how Jesus in fact is encountering this particular Canaanite Gentile woman. The Canaanite woman is not encountering Jesus in Jerusalem. Jesus at present is in 
Tyre and Sidon, the Gentile region. And she is coming to him there to meet him, to ask for a favor. And what is that? Her daughter is possessed by the demons and she wants that Jesus cures her daughter. She comes to him, pleads with him, and tells him, Lord, please heal my daughter. Strangely enough, Jesus does not mind her at all. That is not something natural to Jesus. It provokes the disciples even to go to Jesus and tell him, Lord, she's crying after you. She's telling you to help her. Please help her. And there comes, perhaps as humanly defined, one of the racial answers from Jesus. He says, I'm sent to the lost sheep of Israel. And the food shall be given to the children and not to the dogs. What a statement. Dogs are not the most favorable animal for the Jews. At the same time, to use that word as a derogatory language towards a person is something very abominable. But the answer of this woman is the maximum of one's faith. She tells, Lord, even the dogs eat the crumbs that fall from the table of the children. That even transformed Jesus. Why did Jesus make this statement? Was he in fact using this abominable language against this woman? Absolutely no. My dear sisters and brothers, one thing that we need to remind ourselves is this. God always tests our faith. God tests us to the maximum to prove the credibility of our faith. We are not to be people who are going after the candies in order to have immediate satisfaction in our lives. Very often we seek for miracles to happen so that we can be happy in our lives. But the Lord says, happiness is not something that I am offering you. I would like you to be joyful people. Joy is an inner business. In fact, Jesus provokes the faith of this woman to that extent she is willing to lower herself to the maximum and accept that faith that is instilled in her and engender it through the nourishing reaction that she gives. Lord, even the dogs eat the crumbs that fall from the table of the master. And the answer of the Lord, your faith is so great, your daughter is healed. Sisters and brothers, Today, it is time for us to evaluate the depth of our faith. God tests us with various aspects of our life. He even challenges us to question our own credibility in growing Christian faith. When we are affected by various smaller levels of life, such as the caste, creed, color, language, and right, we should be able to realize for ourselves that God's Attitude is totally different than that of the human being. Let's rise above subjective human interests, uphold our faith in truth and sincerity, and bring home a new message. God alone suffices. Remember, my sisters and brothers, God always tests us. And let us prove the credibility of our faith when God tests us. Amen.